Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica Ward King, also known as the Stigma Crusher. And here in this channel, we deal with issues of mental health and mental illness from my twin perspectives as a person with lived experience of bipolar 2 disorder, as well as a person with a PhD in experimental psychology. Sound like your jam? You're more than welcome here. Please remember to hit subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified each and every week when I post, hit that notifications bell as well. Remember to like and share widely. We would love to add people to our community here. And with that, I guess it's time to start stigma crushing for this week. This week I was reminded that rest is not the same thing as recovery. And as we're going into that time of year where people will be taking time off in the summertime, there's going to be some long weekends coming up and some beautiful weather, it's really worthwhile noting that what you do to rest is not the same thing that you do to recover. The way I like to think about it is this. If you're running really low on battery, let's say, let's say you're out, you, you have to, you're in a really long lineup somewhere, you're waiting for something, and you find that you've only got like eight or nine percent in battery on your phone. You know you're going to need to call for a ride at the end of, you know, once you get to the end of your lineup. And so what do you do? You don't have a charger with you. The best thing you can do is turn your phone off. And so you do, you turn it off, you let it rest. When you turn it back on again, however, there's not going to suddenly be more battery life in it. It's not going to suddenly be more peppy and, and fast. In fact, when you turn it back on, it's still going to be at an ailing battery level of around 8 or 9%. So what can you do? Well, the best thing to do for your phone is to let it recover or recharge, literally. That's the best thing you can do for your phone. It's got to be the best thing you can do for yourself as well. But how do we recharge? It's not the same thing. We can't just plug ourselves into the wall and passively sit there and let ourselves recharge. So what does it look like to recharge, psychologically speaking? So the things that we do to recharge are really quite individual. There is some research on the recharging of people that are more introverted versus people that are more extroverted. Now, introversion and extroversion is conceived of as a continuum where you are somewhere along that line, either completely introverted, which is not very many of the, of the population, or completely extroverted, which again is not very many of the population. It really runs in this bell curve where most people are somewhere here in between the extremes of introverted or extroverted. But we do know that people with introversion, they're kind of defined as people who gain energy, who recharge their batteries by being by themselves or by being really low key, by doing activities that are very individual, such as reading or potentially, you know, binging Netflix, watching TV, watching movies, um, doing hobbies that are very individual, crafting, that kind of thing. People with extroversion gain energy from being with other people. That's, that's really how they recharge their batteries. And so that might look like having parties or being together with friends, being on a night out or an afternoon with, you know, a brunch with the, with the girls or the guys. Um, and so people that are introvert, more introverted or more extroverted might find that they recharge in those different kinds of ways. I know for myself, I really come forward as an extrovert. I'm super talkative, super bubbly, very, very open and, and talk to lots of people, but really I recharge my batteries in a much more individual and personal way. The best way that I can really give myself some time to recover and recharge is to really be at home with my family at the most um, and, and to really be doing things that are very individual. I used to like to read since my depression has gotten worse. It's been more and more difficult to concentrate to read, um, but I've taken to listening to audiobooks, which is a passable um, approximation. Um, and you know, watching videos on YouTube, binging Netflix, those kinds of things, those are really what allow me to recharge. And so when I'm looking at potentially taking time off work to recharge my batteries, it's really to do those kind of individual things. I don't recharge when I'm in larger group settings. I don't recharge when I'm at parties or when I'm in, you know, nights out. Um, and, and so you may want to take a look at yourself. And if you generally think of yourself as an extrovert, like me, you may find that the, the old trope of extroverts get energy from other people might not be true for you. And so do watch that. 
But the things that do offer us chance to recover are very, very individual and very, very different from person to person. Um, but those are things like that are self-care items. We call it self-care, and I think self-care gets a really bad rap these days as kind of the cure-all in it, and people tend to think of it as, ooh, I'm going to meditate or I'm going to color. For some people, that is something that helps them recover. For other people, like me, I'm, I'm really not at all into the coloring, meditating, that kind of thing, mindfulness. Um, I much more prefer to write or to read or, well, listen these days. Um, but th those are pieces of self-care. Taking a bath or a shower, a uh, piece of self-care that can help you to, to recover and recharge your batteries. Um, and it could also be playing sports, having exercise. Those are excellent things to help us to recover and recharge our batteries, even though it seems like we're spending all of our charge, different charge, right? Um, spending all of your, your physical energy and, and, and that will allow you to get better sleep. It will keep your heart rate up. It will improve blood pressure. It will improve, um, immunity and, you know, exercise. We know it, it has a multitude of benefits. Being out in nature is one way that particularly here in the West we, we use to recharge our batteries. And so if you can take a, a, a leisurely walk in nature or even a more strenuous hike to add the benefits of exercise and nature together, those are wonderful things for that many of us can do to recharge our batteries. Um, so apart from exercise, another thing that we often do to recharge is eat. A lot of our social gatherings, a lot of our, our self-care is in the form of foods that we love, foods that remind us of, of home or, or of somebody's cooking, uh, foods that are good for the soul or also you know good for the body sometimes. Sometimes it's those foods that maybe aren't as good for the body, ones that are higher in sugar and fats that are most comforting and most um, nostalgic. And that's okay too. Everything in moderation, right? You can't go at anything. 100% full tilt all the time and expect to recharge. But being able to have those treats, those little, little moments of self-care is really important. So eating, exercise, hobbies, things that we enjoy, those are all wonderful ways to recover. Now I've often thought about this. If I were to go off work because of my mental health, what would it accomplish for me? For me, I don't have any conception of what I would do with that time that would help me to get better. I don't have any real conception of what I would do to help myself recover from my mental illness. And that is partly why I do not go on sick leave, even when I'm feeling as unwell as I, I can be um, in this period. I, I don't go on sick leave because I don't see what it's going to accomplish. And I'm coming to realize that that's because I don't know what to do to really recover. There's only so much I can do in terms of reading or listening to audiobooks and binging Netflix that is going to be recovery. Um, as I say, everything in moderation and doing any of those things all the time isn't going to really help recharge the batteries. It's, it's going to take away from the recovery, in fact, if I do anything too much. So what would I spend my time doing? And as I think about it now, I, th I wonder if maybe a more concentrated exercise program would be something I could do. Um, if I could take up a new hobby, something that's more challenging to myself, if that's something I could do to help myself recover. And so I'm coming to the realization that if I were ever to take time off for my mental health or my mental illness, I would need to have a recovery plan in place something that I would be able to do that would recharge my battery so that at the end of the period of time that I'm off work, I actually have more in my battery bank than I did when I started. That's what I really need in order to take time off to recharge, to come back to work stronger. And so that's what I thought of when I heard, when I was reminded this week that rest is not the same thing as recovery. Just being off work is just kind of like turning off the phone that doesn't have an awful lot of charge to begin with. How can I expect if I don't have, you know, something to plug into that I'm going to have any more battery life left when I go back into work at the end of my period of time off? And I think that's why a lot of people really have trouble with time off work uh, for their mental health because we don't have a conception of a plan of what's going to help us recover. And so I urge you, even if you're not planning to go off work, even if you're just finding that 
your evenings, your weekends are not really leading you to recharge as much as you could so that you can face your work week with a little bit more in your battery pack each week, try to think of a recovery plan. Try to just sit down and list out the things that you like to do, the things that give you comfort, the things that give you energy, that make you feel more at peace and more alive. Write them out. Make as long of a list as you can and then start to look at it in terms of what are some small measurable improvements that you could make, things that you could start doing that would help you to recharge your batteries, not just to rest, but to recharge. Oh, and that's one thing I almost forgot. Don't discount the absolute curative power of sleep. When I say rest does not equal recovery, I'm not necessarily talking just about sleep. Sleep is a really huge part of being able to recover from mental illness or from physical illness for that matter. Sleep is a huge, huge part of it. Getting good sleep, having good sleep hygiene. A lot of us are spending a lot of time on our phones or a lot of time watching screens, especially just before bed. There is the scroll of doom, you know, the doom scrolling that you do looking through Twitter or the news reels, um, or even lately it's been TikTok or YouTube or some other social media platform, Instagram, just kind of clicking through them, roll, scrolling through them, looking for nothing in particular, going down rabbit holes. Those things aren't the best for sleep. I know you've heard it a thousand times, so I'm not going to go on about it because I'm just as guilty as the rest of us. But having really good sleep hygiene where you get off your screen for at least a period of time before bedtime, do something to wind down, maybe have a hot cup of, of herbal tea, read a book, um, chat with your partner, talk on the phone, whatever the case is for you, whatever helps you to get good sleep, that is something you can do for your recovery. That's not just rest. So I hope this uh, video has been helpful in reminding you that rest is not the same thing as recovery and that you can have a recovery plan in place that helps you to do the things that you need to do in order to recharge your battery so that you'll be better, a better you going into your new week. Take care everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Stigma Crusher.